this is Kang Tron, and we'll be discussing victory against the Islamic State, its meaning, and its implications. This presentation is aimed at assessing the current state of the Islamic State against the backdrop of President Trump's declaration of victory against the terrorist group. We begin by looking at the doctrinal definition of defeat and applying that definition to the operational capability of ISIS to achieve its strategic objectives. But first, let's clarify our framework. The Defense Department defines the state of defeat as one in which an enemy force has temporarily or permanently lost the means or the will to fight. That is, defeat has two paths, the elimination of the means of resistance or the will to resist. Unlike a conventional military enemy, however, ISIS defines its ideology in such a way as to fundamentally preclude the possibility of any coexistence with the United States. For its core followers, then, the elimination of the will is not a realistic option. This leaves the second means of obtaining defeat of the enemy, degrading and eliminating their ability to continue to fight a war. The doctrinal definition, however, is agnostic to specific means. That is, so long as in some way, conventional or otherwise, the enemy has the ability to realize strategic objectives, they have not been defeated. Specifically, in the case of ISIS, the loss of command and control capabilities or territory does not inherently signal defeat in any rigorous sense. So, to know the victory condition, we must know the enemy's strategic objectives. ISIS's grand strategic objectives are the creation of a caliphate and the defeat of any non-ISIS entities. To those ends, the group defines its strategic objectives based on the writings of AQI leader Abu Musab al-Zakarwi, pictured on the right. Zakari's five-step plan begins with the emigration of sympathetic individuals, their congregation or concentration into a critical mass which is then capable of exporting terrorism and destabilizing foreign governments. The group then consolidates its gains from the power vacuum of instability before ultimately using these gains to actualize their grand strategic objective of creating a caliphate. There's no doubt that many of ISIS's capabilities have been degraded. First and foremost, the group has lost all of its territorial possessions. Interdiction campaigns have disrupted their ability to finance terror, and coalition strikes have repeatedly eliminated significant figures within their leadership structure. Despite this, ISIS maintains significant ability to carry out its operations. For example, ISIS maintains an ability to exert psychological control over liberated regions and undermine confidence in local governments through a continued vehicle-borne IED campaign. Open source data on ISIS-perpetrated vehicle-borne IED attacks shows no discernible decrease in incidents even as ISIS loses territory and fighters to the coalition. These attacks have not been strongly bound to ISIS-controlled regions thereby creating a lingering specter of ISIS's presence long after its forces have been routed from the region. More surgical strikes against key leaders, up to and including the founder and head Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, do not substantially cripple the organization. According to concurring assessments by U.S. Central Command and the DIA, pre-prepared plans of succession and a decentralized command structure has allowed ISIS to maintain the bulk of its command and control capabilities despite its key leaders being eliminated. By these metrics, ISIS has not been defeated, but it has taken a new form that is distinct from the one that catalyzed the formation of the global coalition. This does not make the group any less dangerous, but it does create an analytical trap where viewers are tempted to approach the ISIS issue through a now outdated paradigm. This older paradigm would perhaps suggest that the Islamic State is no longer a threat when in reality, it merely changed forms in response to its environment. Today's Islamic State and tomorrow's Islamic State is an atomized collective that retains many high-tech capabilities and a willingness to use them against the United States and its allies. The group continues to maintain a propaganda machine that transcends its trademark magazine and video publications. 
Even if ISIS-produced propaganda videos can be relatively easily removed from mainstream platforms, the global community is less certain about how to respond to the unknown number of bot accounts that inflate the presence of the Islamic State online. Between November 21st and 24th, 2019, European law enforcement agencies successfully removed an unprecedented amount of ISIS or pro-ISIS accounts and materials. While this operation by Europol was highly successful in achieving its aims, it does not, and perhaps cannot, effectively target the means of ISIS to continue creating more fake accounts. Unless there is a fundamental shift in the very nature of the internet, the creation of malicious information or accounts will remain instantaneous, cheaply scalable, and agnostic to physical distance. With this, along with continued vehicle IEDs, a limited but significant ability to move money abroad, ISIS likely intends to maintain and consolidate regional influence until such time that it is able to reconstitute itself into a territorial entity. We should note that this course of action is still congruent with Zarqawi's five-step plan,